Okay, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today's the 15th of May, 2018. And what I'd kind of like to show off today is something I referred to the other day. I said, I've got some soil here that is very good. So, um, this is it. This is it. And I mean, I'll give you the backstory on it. See, this is the proximity to the barn. It's on the east northeast side right and when we got this place there was just piles of manure out here they would move it out of the barn where they were raising calves now where my where my machine shop is now that's where they raised calves and they just scoop the manure out and just pile it <clears throat> and um, I gave a whole bunch of it to a guy that wanted it for his garden and I that was when we first started I didn't know anything about fertility. All I knew is this field right here, we scooped sand off of this field for the kids' sandbox. That's, that's how sandy it was. It was like the beach. And look at it now. Right? And it all started with a guy showed me how my two-bottom plow worked. He was showing me how it worked in this field. And I went through the field and I plowed it. I turned the whole thing over and then I planted rye in here. The same guy said, well, you could probably get rye started in there. And I did. And then I turned pigs on it <clears throat> and the rye would have been maybe a foot and a half high when I did it. And they ate the whole thing. And I thought, well, that worked good. So I did it again. And I really wasn't thinking that, hey, this is going to increase the fertility of this field. It, that's not what I was, why I was doing it. And it would have been probably two years ago or three years ago, I started to notice that, hey, this is not sand anymore. Or maybe I came in here to get some sand. It's, uh, it's changed. It's, uh, it's dirt. It's not the same as it was. Now here's the look of this stuff. I don't know. That's going to come through real well. But this is the best I have seen this. I didn't do anything with it last year at all. We just had um, the cows out here, and I would put their round bale feeders out, and they just ate out here and pooped out here. And last night I came out with the rototiller, and I made a couple of passes, and it was addictive. I did the whole thing. I had to turn the headlights on. It was so cool. The smell was so amazing. And I'm looking at this extremely rich soil here. <clears throat> and then we got rain on it last night. There's a lot of clover in here and there's a lot of uh, orchard grass. And my plans here, this is the master plan, is this field and that field were pig fields. And you can see there's still a couple over there now. They're going to come out, pigs are going to be on the <clears throat> east side of the farm and the cows will be on the west side. So my, now my cows have access to the barn, that's where they go in and lay around. They call that loafing, that's where they go and loaf. And then we're going to plant this in something that will be forage for them. Rye would be great, it really would, because we'll get a nice stand and then by, by fall it'll be a little tough but they'll be, able to, they'll be able to stomach it. And then I can extend my grazing season, you know, way into wintertime. And then we can put bales out here and round bale feeders, and then we'll catch their manure out here again. Um, and then that field over there, <clears throat> I'm going to do the same thing. You can see I haven't worked that at all, and it's got a bunch of growth in it. And then this grass area that you see cutting down the middle, that's a lane. So the cows can travel down that, and I can uh, reconfigure the fence on this west side so I can put them out on hay fields after I'm done cutting the hay off. Because <clears throat> I have several fields I can do that. You can't do it on low fields because they're so heavy that they, they make holes. But on the high fields, it's dry. And, you know, I wouldn't put them out there in a rainstorm, but... If they just want to go out and, and snoop around behind after we've, we're done cutting, that's fine. It's not, they're not going to hurt anything. And then, 
you know, they're self-feeding. We're not feeding them the hay that we've baled up and stored in the barn. So I, I think I'm going to have way more hay than I need. So my plan is to feed probably five or six calves because I won't be feeding it to pigs anymore in the numbers that I was. So this is kind of cool. I, I'm real thrilled with the fertility of this. Um, you can see that there's grass in here that I've tilled down and that's only going to help us. I've not decided what I'm going to seed it into, but um, I got some things coming in the mail. <clears throat> sorghum is one, but I don't know enough about sorghum. I think there's some things you need to know about that before you do it. So I'll see, but uh, I'm going to get some of this tested and then we'll go from there. But man, I am thrilled with this tiller. Um, if I was doing this with a cultivator, I cannot get down in this bottom part here because it keeps so much moisture. Uh, but with the tiller, I can back down into it and then till out. Or, I mean with the rototiller, yeah. And this stuff is just as black as it could be. This would make, I mean, this is going to grow stuff unbelievably. And it's not mucky, it just... Oh, I should make perfume out of this. This would work. This would work. All right, Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Anyone can farm.